This guide is designed to make your time getting either of the elite ranks in Metal Gear Solid 1 much easier. Using the routes and techniques detailed in this guide will also get you 18 of the 19 trophies needed to get the MGS1 Platinum in just a run and a half. Let's get into it. Since my series of video guides are designed to make getting the highest ranks in the Metal Gear games as easy as possible, we're going to be playing on the original Japanese version of Metal Gear Solid. Now when I say that, I mean the version of MGS1 that can be found in the Master Collection main menu, under Metal Gear Solid, and then by selecting the Japanese language. If you don't see this option, you need to download the Japanese language pack from your respective platform's marketplace. So for example, since I'm on PlayStation, I need to select this option and have it take me to the PSN store so I can download the Japanese pack. It's important to note that when I say the original Japanese version, this is what I'm referring to. Don't be confused by Metal Gear Solid Integral. The reason why we're playing on this version of the game is because the original release of Metal Gear Solid in Japan only had one difficulty players could play on. This difficulty is the equivalent to easy on the versions of Metal Gear Solid 1 that we got in the Americas and the PAL regions, which means you're essentially getting Fox or Big Boss rank by playing on easy instead of hard or extreme difficulties. Having said that, we still need to abide by the usual restrictions that you should be seeing on screen. Since I realize that not everyone wants to play on the Japanese version in order to cheese this achievement, please keep in mind that 99% of the strategies I will be showing you in this video are able to be performed even on hard or extreme difficulties. There are only a few key differences primarily found within boss fights, and once we get to those points in the game, I will be showing you different ways you can take these bosses on, depending on your difficulty. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you want to earn big boss rank instead of Fox on the Japanese version of MGS1, you need to complete the game once before you follow this guide in order to unlock the radar off option in the special menu. This allows you to turn the radar off, and by doing so, you are able to earn big boss instead of Fox on subsequent playthroughs. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get started. So since we have a time limit, as always, in order to get elite ranks, we have to skip every cutscene as well as every codec call, unfortunately. And we're going to start off here by going prone and crawling under this first obstacle we have in front of us here. And then we're going to throw one of the guards, the guard that's directly in front of us. And there's two ways to do this. If you have the radar, you can just watch his cone of vision on the radar and wait till he turns around. Otherwise, what I like to do is go into first person view. As soon as he turns around, we're going to run straight toward him, throw him, and that's going to distract the other guard as well. So I'm going to throw him here. The other guard is going to hear that and go investigate. And that gives us the perfect gap in their patrol routes to go to where we need to go. You can pick up that ration there if you want to. Otherwise, you can literally just hang out at this forklift here and press yourself up against this left side of it here. And this will make it so no one sees you, even when they're patrolling. And we're just going to wait here with our backs pressed up against the forklift until the last guard, the third guard, comes down the lift. Once he does, I will show you guys how to tackle that portion of the game. All we're going to do once we see that guard come down the lift is once again go into first person view. And we're just going to wait for him to walk out. And as soon as we see him walk out, we're just going to literally walk behind him and into the lift before any of these guards can see us. So as soon as he walks out, just run behind him. Very easy to do. And you've made it to the heliport section of Metal Gear Solid 1. And now another thing that I should mention while we're skipping all of these cutscenes and codec calls is... If you've watched my other video guides on MGS2 or MGS3 to get Big Boss or Foxhound rank, you know that there is a save limit for both of those games, with MGS2 having the most punishing save limit at only 8 saves across both Tanker and Plant chapters. And Metal Gear Solid 3 has, I believe, 25 saves. You have to stay under 25 saves. This game is extremely generous with your saves and where you can save, so I'm not necessarily going to be showing you different options on where to save. I might mention, like... <laughs> You know, you could save here if you're not confident in the upcoming sections. But I will be showing you where I save personally. And all of that to say that you have 80 saves maximum. You have to stay under 80 saves. And that's pretty easy to do, in my opinion. Either way, once you've skipped all these codec calls and you have control of Snake again, we're just going to hang out on these steps. Wait for the searchlight to go away. We're going to dip to this left side here and then back over to the right to pick up these chaff grenades. And once you have those chaff grenades, this is something that I like to do. But I like to pick up the SOCOM here. You don't need to do this, but I really like having the SOCOM already equipped 
by the time that we get to the guard rush with Meryl. Now, I usually go left and into the vent that's on the lower ground here. But since we want to pick up the thermal goggles to make this run even easier than it already is, we're going to actually go up here into this upper portion and climb into this, this vent here. Like I said, I usually never do this. But I'm trying to make this playthrough, this guide, as easy as it can be for everyone. This is something that I would highly recommend those of you that are playing on hard or extreme to do. Because what we're essentially doing here is, like I said, picking up the thermal goggles. And while we don't use the thermal goggles a ton during this playthrough, the main reason why we want to pick them up is because they make the body armor spawn where we need it to spawn later on in the game. And the body armor is going to be our best friend against some of the boss fights later on, like the, the last half of the game, I'd say. So it is worth taking the extra time since this is slower. The upper portion vents are slower than the lower vent that I usually go through. But it's worth it to get the thermal goggles and especially worth it to pick up the body armor. So just make your way through all these vents to the exit, which isn't too far away now. Once you're here, once you're over that gap, all you have to do is press the punch button, which is the circle button on a PlayStation controller if you're on PlayStation. What we're going to do here is watch out for this camera. You can use the wall there to go around it. I like to throw a chaff grenade here since there's a camera right where we need to pick up our thermal goggles. Once it goes off, just pick these up. Go back outside. There's going to be one more camera we need to avoid. But I'm not going to waste the chaff on that. We're just going to be patient here and wait for it to pass us by. So right now you can actually go up against the wall here under the camera. Wait for it to shift its view. Once it does, you can go down the stairs. Here we're going to have a couple of guards, so be careful. Just watch the radar if you have the radar at your disposal. Otherwise, just head to the elevator. And we're going to go down one level. Now again, you could save here if you want to, just so you don't have to do the entire intro and all that all over again if you do get caught or if you mess up this next section. But I like to save for the first time during the guard rush that we're going to take part in in just a second here. So once you're here, just crawl over to the left. There's going to be a series of grates that we can look through. The first one, if you want to see the cutscene with Meryl, you can look through it. Otherwise, we're just going to go directly to where we need to go. So once you're here, just make another left. We're going to skip this vent. And once you're at the second vent, all you need to do is go into first person view and look down. That's going to trigger the cutscene. We're going to skip all these cutscenes. And this is one of the most important portions of the game. Believe it or not, it's super early on. This portion is... The portion that a lot of first-time players that are going for some of the elite ranks, like Fox, like Big Boss rank, don't really know where they messed up. And this section here is where they messed up. So what I'm talking about is obviously the guard rush. Now, most people, again, that are new to getting these high ranks have the, I don't know, common misconception, I guess you could say, that you have to clear out all these guards yourself. If you do that, you're putting yourself at risk for going over the kill limit, as there is always a kill limit for these elite ranks. Usually it's zero, but in this game you have to kill at least, I think it's 20-something guards. So the way that this is done, and by the way, save here if you haven't already. This is going to be our first save. The way that we're going to do this is by taking out the first three guards. The first three guards in, in this gauntlet, in this boss rush, are, are kind of mandatory to take out. We unfortunately have to kill them. Now, every guard after that, we're going to let Meryl take care of them. We're going to weaken them for her and then take and then let her take care of them. So I'll show you here. So these first three guards, again, just spam your fire button and take them out since we have to take them out. And now every single guard after this, we're going to do our very best to, one, avoid their gunfire, and two, make sure not to kill them ourselves, let Meryl take care of them. The best way to do that is by going to the top right corner of the room and then firing at the guards twice, only twice. So one, two, and then I like to grab this guy here. It's okay if they hit you, that's fine. Just don't let them hit you too much. Especially if you're on easy, you can take a couple more shots than on the harder difficulties. Here, I'm going to shoot at this guy twice, let Meryl take care of him. I'm just going to let Meryl take care of this guy right away. 
Shoot this guy once. Shoot this guy twice. Let Meryl take care of him. Then I'm just going to run around, avoid gunfire, let her take care of this last guy. Once you've gotten to this point, they're going to use grenades. So make sure you're up against this top wall here. And now same thing. We're going to fire twice. One, two. Grab one of these guards as a human shield for ourselves. It's okay if they knock you down. That's actually not bad at all because it gives you a bit of invincibility. Once you've made it through, we are done. Now, if you take too much damage there on hard or extreme, just reload and keep trying that over and over again. You can take a couple of shots. Since the way that I'm going to show you guys how to take Ocelot out, we're not going to take any damage at all. We shouldn't take any damage. But if you don't feel comfortable, since that's going to dictate your health as we go through the game for the most part, just reset. I'm not resetting here because, one, I am playing on the Japanese version, which is pretty much playing on easy. And I know that once we beat bosses, we get our entire health bar back. But again, if you're playing on hard or extreme because you want to challenge yourself, I would probably reset that section until you have a comfortable amount of health. Either way, once make your way down to the B2 level. Equip the key one card and pick up the C4 there. Next, we're going to go to this little room here in the armory and pick up some grenades. Once you picked up those two weapons, you can place a C4 charge here. Blow the wall open and then go through. Now, we're going to be using all of our C4 to blow open walls. We're not going to be using it for the Ocelot fight. I'm going to show you guys an awesome strategy that you can use to avoid any damage during that fight. And this works on all difficulties. So once you're here, make sure your C4 charge is in range of the wall. Blow that wall open. And then what we're actually going to do here is blow open this wall. Now, we're not going to go through that just yet. And then this wall here. That wall is going to come in handy later on when we're about to get our ghost photography picture and we'll talk more about that later once you're ready equip your gun and then walk through i highly advise you save here as soon as you skip this cutscene just save here this is going to be our second save now once you've taken the time to save the first thing you want to do is aim to the top left corner of the room to get a shot off on ocelot and then you want to get pick up this ammo pouch and then just stay here as soon as you pick up that ammo pouch do not move what you want to do is do five punch punch combinations so one two three four, five, and then three stray punches. So one, two, three. Once you're here, you're in the perfect position to shoot at Ocelot, but make it so he can't shoot you. So as you can see, you shoot him once, wait a couple seconds, shoot him again. His shots are going to bounce off the door behind you. Just keep doing that. Shoot every couple of seconds. Try to get him before he reloads. There you go. Fight over without any damage taken. Now, again, the, per the, the best way to do that, and I have a YouTube short on this. You can watch it. should be popping up on your screen now. The best way to do that is to go to the ammo pouch. Once you're at the ammo pouch, you just want to face left or west. And then from there, you do five full punch combinations. So you do two punches five times. Once you do that, you do three straight punches or single punches. And once you do those three, you're just going to angle the SOCOM down to the bottom left. So it would be the southwest corner of the map where ocelot is hiding you're going to get the lock on on him and that's going to make it so you can shoot him but as you saw there he can't shoot you so we have the trophy there for taking out ocelot once you've taken him out just pick up that ammo there and make your way out the wall that we came through and as soon as you come out from the other side of the wall we're going to call meryl so once you're here open up your codec and use it to call Meryl. Now you're going to have quite a long codec call to skip here. I usually don't do this anymore. I do a skip. But for the sake of the video and just doing it the traditional way. We're going to be doing it, you know, the old school way to do it. Which is by calling Meryl. The, the way that's intended, I should say. So calling her here will make it so as soon as we get to the first floor level the door that we need to hope like the hangar door whatever it's called that we need to open is going to be open when we need it to be open we're going to waste no time and for those of you who have played metal gear solid one before you know that is the area where the lasers are so it's kind of good that we picked up the thermals now once we're here i like to throw this guard just to disrupt his route since he gets kind of close to the elevator you don't need to do that if you're quick enough you can just go to the elevator and not worry about it but just to give you ample time, that's what I would do. Either way, once you have the once you're in the elevator, I should say, go up to the first floor as just mentioned, and as soon as it opens up, you should get a codec call. 
It's going to be Meryl again, and she's going to let you know that she opened up the door for us. And now this part, we just have to be patient and careful to not trip any of the lasers. And if you picked up the thermals, which I highly advise that you do, regardless of difficulty, you can equip them here. And once again, that shows you where the lasers currently are. So wait for them to pass your head. That's what I always go off of is Snake's head. Once they're clear of his head, you can walk through. And once you've made it through the last laser, you can equip the level 2 card. And you can actually go prone to crawl to the next area a little bit faster. And this next area is the area before the tank fight. So I would highly advise that you save here. I always save here regardless. This is one of my staple saves when I go through this. Especially on harder difficulties. Once you've done that, if you're on easy on the Japanese version... What I like to do is pick up some claymores. We're going to be using these on the second Vulcan Raven fight later on. Since we cannot do the normal strat that I that I use, which is the stun lock with the Nikita. That is not something that you can do in the Japanese version, unfortunately. Once you've done that and picked up those claymores, just equip your chaff grenades. Now, the way that this fight is going to go, skip this cutscene. We're going to throw a chaff, and then we're going to equip our regular grenades right away. We're going to go this way. Now, be careful. There is a claymore here, so go up against the canyon wall as I did there. You're going to hear the tank activate. You're going to run at a slant here, and you're going to start cooking a grenade. Once you cook it, you can throw it right away before the tank activates. What you want to do is go to this section of the tread here. Do three punch combinations, and then turn toward the, the tank just a little bit. And then throw a grenade. That's hopefully going to hit right inside. Mine didn't. But I still got some damage off. This fight's kind of finicky on the Japanese version. But either way, just throw grenades. That one should hit and end the fight. It's not too bad of a fight on the Japanese version. It's very easy because, again, we are playing on easy. On hard or extreme, it's going to be a little more difficult. If you need something to refer to, you can check out my live streams that I did on hard on my channel that's going to be linked in the description box below that's going to show you how to do all the bosses on hard or extreme either way congratulations for taking on the tank you want to equip your chaff grenades here because if you haven't noticed i always have a weapon out and the reason for that is because in this game having a weapon out makes it so snake runs a little bit faster and the reason why you want to chaff here specifically is because all the other weapons get disabled in this room now, what you want to do is actually walk on these grates and make noise so that guy kind of pulls away from his patrol route. You're going to use that gap in his patrol route to pick up those chaff grenades. We're going to use first-person view to make sure that guy isn't looking at us. And then we're going to CQC throw him to create a gap here that we can use to get to the elevator. And once we're here, we're going to go down one level. Our goal right now is to pick up the Nikita. And it's found in the basement one level. We're just going to go straight into the room. Then to the right. Into this little side room here. We're going to pick up the Nikita and very quickly exit the room. Then we're going to go back in the elevator. And we're going to go down one more level. Once you're here, you can equip the Nikita if you want. Since we're going to use it in just a second. Go through both of these doors. We're going to get hit with a cutscene. And then a codec call. Once you skip that, we're just going to fire Nikita. And hopefully get this first missile where it needs to go. Now, a little trick with the Nikita. To keep it from speeding up, you just need to wiggle it a little bit. Whether you're playing with the D-pad like I do or the analog stick. Just wiggle a little bit to stop it from taking off. Sometimes you don't want it to go fast like there, as an example. I did not want it to take off, but it did. I didn't stop it in time. So just uh, a tip there. Just keep wiggling it. Then we're going to go here and then up here. Now I'm just going to dip out real quick. You don't need to do this, but since I just wanted to show you an example of the rocket not hitting or going too fast, I should say. 
Um, I'm just going to reset my oxygen. Now, before you go into the next room, make sure you go into that first room that we can open and pick up the Famous. Now, this is obviously the bloody hallway scene before the Gray Fox fight. So we're going to have a couple of cutscenes to skip here. Once you've seen that guy fall over, you can equip a grenade to walk a little bit faster. Pick up this ammo. We're going to hit with another cutscene that we can skip this time. And once you're here, we're just going to go through the door. Now, if you're not confident in the Gray Fox fight, this is another great place to save. This is a great place to save if you're on hard or extreme, since he does hit kind of hard, especially in the later phases of the fight. I've practiced this fight a million times, so I'm personally not going to save here. Now, Gray Fox is going to work a little bit differently. I'm going to show you the strategy for easy first. It's similar to the strategy for hard and extreme, but there are some key differences. Primarily the fact that Gray Fox, one, doesn't have as much health on easy as he does on hard or extreme, and two, he flips around way more on easy than he does on hard or extreme. So what I mean by flipping around is as you can see after I hit him, he flips and repositions himself. He's going to do that again. And now here on hard or extreme is where he would kind of launch himself up in the air like that and then come down. He does that way more often on Harder Extreme, whereas on the easier difficulties, he flips around way more, allowing you to get more hits in on him, which is why he dies. One of the reasons why he dies way faster on easy. Now, once you're here, if you have the thermal goggles, you can use them. You don't need to, but just to make it easier on yourself, you can use the thermal goggles. And we actually got really good RNG there. So just to see where he's located, throw him on. And then I like to reposition to the middle of the room here. Just so I'm closer to any of his possible spawn points. Now once you're at this phase, you can take the thermals off. Since you don't really need to locate him. And this is another place where it's different on hard and extreme. He's going to do feints. Did not mean to do that, by the way. He's going to feint his attacks like he did there. Whereas on easy, I don't think he really does that. But either way, I like to have a grenade equipped for this portion. You don't really want to have a weapon equipped for the majority of this fight. But during this section, it helps you avoid his punches since you're running a little bit faster. Now, this next combination is going to be it. That's going to be the fight. So as soon as you take his damage down to zero or close to zero, you want to run away. I like to take this time to pick up these extra chaff grenades here. Now, once he does this, you don't want to get too close to him. I like to fire with the SOCOM from a distance away. You can go in there and melee him. I know a lot of people like to do that, but I don't like to risk it, especially on the harder difficulties. And that's the Gray Fox fight. Now, again, there are a few key differences on hard and extreme, but it's not that different from this version on easy. And again, if you want to check out some reference points for how to do it on the harder difficulties, because it, I wasn't really clear in this guide, you can check out my run that I did on stream that's going to be linked in the description box below. Now, once you've gotten through all those codec calls and cutscenes, congratulations on taking on the Cyborg Ninja. We're going to now head out the door that we came through initially. And we're going to make our way back to the elevator. Do you have your key card equipped? Now, the way to avoid this gun camera is actually by walking up to the wall in front of you. So up here, and then that's going to avoid it. Now, you don't really want to go into this room, but this room has stun grenades, and we absolutely need stun grenades for the tower ascent portion. Once you pick those up, you can go to the elevator. Try not to miss the elevator button like I did there. And then you're going to go up one floor to the B1 level. 
Make sure you have your SOCOM equipped here. We're going to use it to quickly alert Meryl to our presence. So we're just going to go in this room. We're going to point at Meryl. We're going to shoot once. It's going to cause her to see us. And then we're just going to wait for her to open up the bathroom. And we're going to chase her in there to trigger the next cutscene. Once you've regained control of Snake, I like to take a second here to go into the room that has all the weapons and stuff where we picked up the Nikita. And we're just going to take a minute or so to stock up on ammo and all that fun stuff. So we're going to go through here. There's going to be more stun grenades here you can pick up. There's going to be some ammo in here. And some more ammo down here in this room. Just to kind of stock up for the rest of the game. We're not, we're not going to really have to do this again after we do it here. And we also pick up Diazepam, which is a big deal. Don't really need the night vision goggles, which is why I skipped them there. Some more ammo here. And then you can actually pick up the box here, one of the boxes. Once you've done that, you are free to continue. And up ahead, we have the Psycho Mantis fight. You're going to get hit with a couple of cutscenes and codec calls here. And we're going to save after we get through this cutscene with Meryl here. So after she says this about Foxhound, we're going to take the time to save here. I know people have a lot of problems with Psycho Mantis. But I'm going to show you guys a bunch of ways that you can avoid his attacks. The best way to take him on. Take the time to save there. And then what we're going to do is we're immediately going to take out our stun grenades. Because we're going to use one of those pretty early on here. At this point you can just walk around a little bit. And then you can press like triangle. So a lot of people don't know this but... You can actually use triangle or the first person view button in this fight and it shows you where Psycho Mantis currently is. So if you don't have the thermal goggles, you can use that instead. Now what you want to do here is just throw a stun grenade. While the stun grenade is going off, just pick up this extra ammo and ration if you need it. Again, we can only use one ration this entire playthrough. But if you're playing on the Japanese version like me, we shouldn't even really need it until maybe later on. Once Psycho Mantis does his blackout, we can take this moment here to press L1 or R1 or the front two bumper buttons, depending on your controller, to go into the menu here, the Master Collection menu. And we're going to take this opportunity to switch our controller connection to connect as player two. Once you do that, you can exit out by pressing L1 and R1 again. Now here, if you have the thermal goggles, you can throw them on. If you don't, once again, you can use the first person view button or the triangle button to see where Psycho Mantis is currently. I like to use the SOCOM here during this first portion of the fight. So just wait for him to appear where he's going to appear next. At this point, he's not going to be in stealth camouflage, so we can just take him out normally. Now for these chairs, you can literally just go prone till they separate. Punch him once or twice and then go prone again to completely avoid this attack. And then just keep punching him. Punching him does the same amount of damage as shooting at him in this fight. You pretty much never really want to waste ammo on him unless he's like far away like here. Also during this section I do like to fire ammo because these things are chasing after you. So you can't really afford to like stay still if that makes sense. These are very easy to avoid though. For these, same thing, you can just go prone to avoid them. And now for this, just make sure you're in a gap in these attacks. You'll see there's shadows on the ground. Just make sure there's no shadow heading toward you. He's going to do another round of blackout. And then now in this section, I like to throw on the thermal goggles and the Famous. Just to make sure he doesn't get any of his attacks off on us. Now, if you phased him to the next phase here, what you're going to do, you can unequip the thermal goggles here for just a second. You're going to throw another stun grenade right at Meryl. And then you can equip your Famous again. Just have it ready. Equip it and then unequip it is what I would do. He's going to pick Meryl back up. Once he does, we're just going to CQC throw her. And that's going to take her out for good.
So again, once we regain control Snake, all we're going to do is run into Meryl and throw her once, and that's going to knock her out for the rest of the fight. And here's where you could re-equip your Thermal Goggles, and I would use the Famous here instead of the SOCOM, just to make sure he doesn't get this attack off. This is the portion of this fight that a lot of people have some problems with, because there's a lot going on. Either way, congratulations for taking on Psycho Mantis and living to tell the tale. Should get a trophy here for taking him out. Just skip this codec call after the fight, and we're going to head into the next section. Can unequip the thermal goggles and then go into... Actually, you need to do this first. So go into the menu that we went into before. Change your connection to player one. And then exit the menu. Now you can unequip your thermal goggles. Put your card back on. And then you can equip any weapon you want to run a little faster. There's some ammo hidden here. That we can pick up for later. Now once we're here, there's going to be that annoying wolf section where you could take some damage. Which is why we picked up the cardboard box. Now I highly advise, I should have said this before, but I highly advise those of you who are playing on hard or extreme to pick up that cardboard box in the B1 level of the Psycho Mantis area. And now the reason why you want to do this is because there's a hidden trick that helps you avoid taking damage from these wolves. You could punch them if you wanted to here, but there's an even easier way. I, you don't really want to waste any like stun grenades or anything. So what you do is actually, once you get to this section here, Meryl's going to make a comment about you. She thought you were good with dogs or whatever. After she says that, you can actually punch her once, and then quickly, as the punch animation is kind of, you know, it, it runs its course, you just want to equip the box. So right away, it, it sounds more complicated than it really is. So you punch her. As that punch is still going on, you equip the cardboard box. She's going to whistle for a dog to come over, or a wolf to come over, I should say. And they're going to pee on it. The pup is going to pee on it. That's going to have the scent of the pup, which makes it so you can equip it whenever you go back and forth between this section, as we're going to do in just a second, and avoid them hurting you. So you'll see me do it in just a sec. That's before you get the handkerchief, which does the same thing. It has, obviously, Sniper Wolf's scent on it, and it makes it so you can avoid the dogs attacking you. Unfortunately, this part we cannot skip. We just have to watch Meryl do her thing. Once she's finished, we don't have to follow that trail at all. All you literally have to do is just run straight from your starting position. Just hold up on the D-pad or straight on the analog stick, and you'll skip all of this. It's hilarious. As you can see, I'm just holding up and skipping all of that. Here, obviously, we have the cutscene where Sniper Wolf shoots Meryl. This is the introduction to the Sniper Wolf boss fight. And what we have to do here is obviously backtrack all the way to the first building on Shadow Moses. So we're just going to skip this codec call and we're going to backtrack all the way to the armory in the first building. Make sure you run around the edges there so you don't get shot. And I'm going to show you all the trick with the box that I was just mentioning that I just showed you. So we're going to call through this vent. The dogs are still going to be super aggressive. And the way you can avoid taking damage once again, I can just show you as proof that this works. Just throw on the cardboard box. And as you can see, it makes them go docile. You can pretty much only have it equipped, only need to have it equipped when that goes off, when that exclamation goes off, or that noise, you just throw it on for a second, they're going to sniff it, and then go back to being passive. We're just going to go through the door that we used to come in. That's attached to the Psycho Mantis office boss area. You can pick up some more ammo here if you want to. And then what we're going to do before getting into the elevator is actually stop by and pick up a few more stun grenades. Since I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the tower ascent the traditional way, we're not really going to bother with the boba skip. If you know how to do the boba skip, feel free to do that once we get there. But I need to stock up on stun grenades 
And if you're on hard or extreme, there won't be extra stun grenades there since we already picked them up. The only reason why there's stun grenades for me there is because I'm playing on the Japanese version. And once again, that is essentially like playing on easy. And on easy difficulty, ammo, rations, all that good stuff respawns all the time. Pretty much every time you leave a room and come back in. So once you're in this room, don't forget to equip your chaff grenade to run a little bit faster. And then we're not going to bother picking any chaff grenades up right now. We're literally just going to head over to this partially opened hangar door. Crawl under it. And we're going to go through the next one here into the snowfield. Once you're at the snowfield, there's a way to cut right through it and avoid all the claymores. But the easiest way, the way that I usually do it when I'm lazy, is I just hug this canyon wall here. Now make sure you're really hugging it. When I say hug, I mean hug. You can pick up this grenade. And there's extra chaff grenades in here, which is why I didn't pick up the ones in that room we were just in. Just pick those up if you want to, so you're stocked up. And then once again, go around that gun camera and just hug the wall here as best as you can to avoid all the claymores. Takes you a little bit longer, obviously, than just cutting down the middle. But I feel like this is just way easier. Once you're inside, you don't have to worry about the lasers anymore. We're just going to beeline it right to the elevator. And we're going to go down to the B2 armory level. Now, this is another point that I like to save in every single time I play this game. And every single time I'm going for the highest rank, as soon as the elevator opens, I save here. There's a lot going on in this section to begin with. And then we're going to also add on an extra trophy on top of this. So we're going to make a slight deviation from my usual route in order to pick up the camera and take a picture of a ghost. And we need that for one of the trophies. So once you're done saving, equip your stun grenades. You're going to very quickly CQC throw this guy. Then you're going to wait for this guy to turn around. You can use the radar if you're on easy. Once he turns around, don't mess with him at all. We're just going to use this uh, wall here to kind of line ourselves up for crawling. Just crawl at an angle here. Pick this up. And then you want to use this wall to line yourself up again to make sure you don't hit those lasers. Once you're here, you can crawl at an angle to the left. And now once you're here, what you want to do is throw a stun grenade while you're inside. Make sure you don't have the door open. Wait for that stun grenade to go off. Once it does, go through the door very quickly. You have to do this pretty quickly. Have your key card equipped, and we're going to go through this door. You'll recognize this room as where we fought Ocelot. Now, once you're in this room, you're going to go down to the hole in the wall that we blew. And now here, you want to equip a chaff grenade, throw it, wait for it to go off. And then you want to go into this room here. This is where you find the camera. And then you want to make your way back through the hole in the wall and then back into the ocelot boss fight room here you want to line yourself up with this line on the ground here that in between snakes legs as you can see then you want to equip your camera that you just picked up and you want to take a picture directly in front of you now there's going to be a ghost there i promise you if you did it correctly there's going to be a ghost in that picture when you go check it later on for now all you want to do is just make sure that you save that picture Re-equip your key card and your chaff grenades, and then we're just going to exit. We now have our PSG-1 that we need for the Sniper Wolf fight, and our picture of a ghost for the Poltergeist or Ghost Photography trophy. Once you're back out, we're just going to go to the right section of this armory here. We're going to throw this guy, and then we're going to make our way to the elevator. We're going to go in the elevator, and then we're going to go back out the way we came first floor level which is the tank hangar we're going to go through those hangar doors back across the snowfield, and we can finally take on sniper wolf now since we have the psg1 same thing here for crossing the snowfield. we're just going to hug the left canyon wall we're going to use that to guide us and avoid any claymores. And avoid the gun camera by running under it. Take it out a sharp angle and then just hug the canyon wall again. Same thing for this one. Just take it out a sharp angle and you can avoid it.
Now, I'm going to take the time here to pick up some more chaff grenades. Just to make sure we have enough for the end of the game. The way I'm going to do that is the same way as before. I'm going to try to make some noise on the ground here. To get this guy to walk down. And then from here, you can actually mash your weapon equip and unequip button to silence your footsteps. Now, we're going to be using that later on a lot. And again, we're just going to make sure this guy turns around. Once he does, we're going to run up there, throw him, and then walk over to the elevator. Once we're here, we're going to just go down one level. And I believe we can pick up even more stun grenades now if you're playing on the Japanese version. Playing on easy. I do believe these stun grenades... Yep, there they are. So we can pick up even more stun grenades. Just take a quick little detour. And then head to where we need to go, which is the... Psychomantis boss room again. And then the door that connects it to the Sniper Wolf area. Once again, since we're on easy, there's going to be this ammo here that you can pick up. Just to stock up. We're going to go our normal route. We're going to crawl under here. Remember, we do have our box with the wolf scent on it. So make sure to equip that just to avoid any damage here that we don't really need to take. Just keep spamming it on and off. There's some more PSG-1 ammo there that I would equip. Or I would pick up, I should say. Once you're here, you can equip your key card and get ready. Now, we're going to be saving as soon as we walk through the boss door here and we're also going to be saving after this boss that is super important so once you're ready walk through we're going to immediately once we regain control of snake we're going to take the time to save and once you do the easiest way to initiate this boss fight we're going to waste a little bit of time but just to make it safe just hug this wall here you're going to wait for Sniper Wolf to hide behind that pillar, as she just did there. Once she's behind that pillar, you're safe to take uh, Diazepam, equip your PSG-1, and then start aiming at her. Now, she has predetermined spots where she stops. So you kind of want to learn those. If you're not confident there, just to show you guys, if you want to just wait for her to reset and go behind that pillar again, because you don't think you can get the shot off before she can get her shot off, just do what we did at the beginning. Go behind this wall here. And just wait for her to reset. Wait for her to hide behind her little pillar. And then from there, you can reinitiate the fight without risking taking any damage. Since I don't really care here, I'm just going to take her on head on. But that was just an example. Like it, It's going to make the fight last a little bit longer. But So this is the pillar that I'm talking about. If you don't want to take the head-to-head -head against her, just wait till she goes behind this pillar. That's going to give you ample opportunities to... Hide yourself and get ready for the next shot. Either way, congratulations for taking her out. And now here, this is bar none the most important save that you're going to do in this entire game for this, for getting the platinum and for getting the elite trophy and all the other trophies way easier. What you want to do here is make sure that you save here. And that you do not overwrite this save. So what I would do to be extra careful is save. But count the number of saves that this save slot is going to be in. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our 7th save file, we're going to make sure that we do not overwrite it. This is super important. Our 7th save file is going to be our most crucial save file here. For cutting down the amount of time that it's going to take you to get the platinum in this game. And to cut down on the amount of playthroughs that you have to go through. And I will be explaining why in just a second. Once you've saved though, make sure you save here. Everybody save here regardless of if you're on the Japanese version, on hard or extreme. Again, that save is super important, which is why I keep harping on it. Now, the reason why it's so important is, is for a few reasons. Number one, instead of having to do two entire playthroughs of this game to get the platinum we only have to do one entire playthrough and then half a playthrough from this section on now the reason why we want to start from this section is because of the torture sequence 
The reason why the torture sequence is so important is because the torture sequence dictates what special item you are awarded at the end of the game. So if you go through the torture as we're about to do here, if you survive the torture and you do not give in, you get the quote-unquote cannon ending of the game, which gives you the bandana. You end up with Meryl at the end of the game, and you get the bandana. Now, if you give into the torture here, you get the Otacon ending, and you get stealth camouflage. So, the the quote-unquote normal way to do that is by playing the game twice, all the way through. But if you save after the Sniper Wolf fight, obviously, the next section is the torture sequence. So you can... The first time, like I'm doing here, you can go, go through the entirety of the torture and get the cannon ending. And then once you're done with this entire playthrough and you get your elite ranking, you start up the game again from that from the Sniper Wolf, from our seventh save file in my example. And from there, you just do half the game on. And the second time, you give into the torture in order to get the stealth camouflage. I know that sounds very confusing, but trust me, it's the best way to do this. As it's going to make your playthroughs, the amount of playthroughs that you do, you know, much, it's, it's going to be less playthroughs than doing it the normal way. The only real tip that I can give you for this torture sequence is make sure you don't stop mashing the circle button after he's done shocking you because you're able to get some health back. Now, on the easy version of the game, you're only going to have to go through three rounds of torture. On hard or extreme, I believe it's five, so it's quite a bit. Either way, we're just going to hang out here until we get called in again. We get tortured again. Once you hear that beeping, that means we're going to go into the next round of torture. Same thing here. If you're doing it the same way that I'm doing it and getting the bandana or the cannon ending first, make sure you don't give in to the torture here. And once again, make sure even after you're done getting electrocuted that you don't stop mashing circle to regain some life. That's going to make it much easier, especially if you're playing on hard or extreme, where the torture goes on for longer. Once you've gone through that, you're going to be in your cell again. And we're just going to hang out once again. Once you get to this point in the codec call where Naomi offers to massage you using the controller you can actually save after this point and i would highly recommend that you save here because we're going to do a trick involving johnny where we don't we, we skip a mandatory alert and we also avoid killing johnny and just in case you mess that up i would highly advise that you actually save before this codec call if you can because you're going to have to listen to this codec call every time you reload the save if you need to reload it But either way, even if you save after, we're going to have plenty of time to get through this game in the allotted time that we need to. So I'm going to save after. If I were you, though, I would save before that codec call. So after the second round of torture. Now, remember, do not save over your seventh file. Do not save over this file. Make sure that you either save over a previous save file or a new one. Once you've gone through that codec call, all we're going to do is wait for Johnny to take off to the restroom. And then we're going to wait for Otacon to come meet us at this door over here and give us the ketchup bottle. Now, the perfect time to practice what we're going to do is right now, while you're waiting for all that to happen, 
So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to skip a, manda a mandatory alert, and we're also going to skip out on killing Johnny, taking him out lethally. So the way to do that is by lining yourself up with that door, then going prone, and then making it to where Snake's legs are kind of phased through this door on the other side there. And what that does is it essentially lets us get up using the crouch button and choke Johnny out before he's able to cause the mandatory alert. And then once we have him, we're gonna we're gonna wring his neck ten times to make him pass out and to avoid killing him. So if you do it correctly, you're gonna avoid a mandatory alert, and you're gonna avoid killing Johnny. So here we go. As soon as Otacon takes off, we're gonna position ourselves up against the door. We're gonna make it so Snake's legs are faced to the other side. Now, if you go too far, this happens. Snake ends up crouching. So just about there is fine. Get your ketchup bottle going. Use it. And then we're going to wait for Johnny to see us. He's going to be surprised. He's going to be like, what the hell is going on? He's going to run over to the door behind us. We're going to wait just a second after he opens the door. He's going to run into our cell. At that point, we're going to get up. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you're going to let him go. He's going to be knocked out. So there you go. We avoided the alert and we avoided killing Johnny. Equip your level six key card. Come into the torture room and pick up your equipment. You're going you're gonna to get a small, unskippable cutscene. Once Snake has his gear on, watch out for this gun camera. You can avoid it by running at an angle. Now, be careful. There's a few more gun cameras in this room. So, once again, run at them at an angle. Our goal is to get to the elevator. Push the button here. And then we're going to go up to the first floor tank hangar. And once we're at the tank hangar, all we're going to do is go through the tank hangar door that leads to the snowfield and cross the snowfield. So we're here, we're going to go right and right into this door that leads to the outside snowfield. Once we're at the snowfield, we're going to take our normal route using the canyon wall to the left and just taking that all the way up. Make sure to equip a chaff grenade or whatever weapon to make yourself run a little bit faster here. Main thing here is, as always, avoiding the claymores. And the gun cameras as well. Now we can crawl through here. And actually, they're not there. This time, we're going to get some more chaffs in the next room. So don't do that. We're instead going to get them in this next room here. And you can save at any point after the torture sequence if you want to, to be super safe. This would probably be where I would save. If you're not confident in uh, the next couple portions here. Of the game but for now i'm just gonna keep going here i'm gonna alert this guy to my presence using our footsteps I'm gonna take that time to then get these chaff grenades here and wait for that guy up here to turn around he's turned around now so we can head into him cqc throw him and then go to the elevator now technically here we to pro progress like the story we would go to b1 but we're going to go to basement level 2. And if you picked up the thermal goggles at the beginning of the game, like I advised you to, you're going to notice now that in one of these rooms here, to the left side here, the body armor is going to be spawned. Now, if you didn't pick up the thermals, the thermals will be found in this room, which is why it's super important to pick them up if you want to pick up the body armor. Once you picked it up, head back to the elevator. And now we're going to progress the story. We're going to go to the basement one level, which is the level that has Psycho Mantis's office and all that. So make your way up to B1. Now we have the bomb in our equipment that Ocelot put in there after the torture sequence. I'm going to take a second to pick up some more stun grenades here. Just to make sure we have enough. So like I said, we I know about the bomb, the, the, the timer bomb in our bags. We're going to dispose of that in this next room. You don't want to do it here because it causes an alert, the explosion. So as soon as you phase in here, what you can do is turn around, look through your bags to find the, the bomb, and throw it away. I think we'll throw it like any other thrown weapon. Just make sure you're not in the blast radius. And then pick up some more ammo if you would like before making your way out this door.
And now that we've defeated Sniper Wolf, we don't have to use our box anymore to stop the wolves from attacking us. We can actually use her handkerchief or her scarf. It works the same way as the box, though. It just has her scent on it. And obviously, the wolves love her. So they won't attack you if you have the handkerchief equipped. Once you're on this side, you can re-equip your key card. And then we're going to progress to the map where we fought Sniper Wolf for the first time. Once you're here, all you have to do is run forward. You're going to get this little skippable cutscene. And then a codec call. Once you've gotten past that cutscene and codec call, all you have to do is keep running forward and we're going to go into the room that we attempted to go in the first time before we were stopped by those guards and taken to the torture room, so right in here. And once you're in this next room, I highly advise you to save here. So go ahead and take the time to save. Remember not to save over your post Sniper Wolf boss fight save file. So for me, it's number seven, my number seven slot. Once you're in here, if you know how to do the boba skip, go ahead and do that. I'm going to be showing you all the traditional way to do this room. What you want to do is you want to cook a grenade as soon as you pick up this next ammo box. And then you're going to throw it into the next door, so make sure you have your key card equipped. This is how it's going to look. So as soon as you pick that up, cook a grenade, and then throw it as soon as the door opens. That's going to make it so the guards behind you aren't right behind you as soon as you start ascending the staircase. Now, once you're in here and you've started the tower ascent, make sure you equip the body armor. This is partly why we picked that up. And this is also super important if you don't do the boba skip and you're playing on hard or extreme. This body armor is going to be a lifesaver for this section. And then for your weapon, make sure you have stun grenades equipped. That's why we go back and pick up so many of them is for this section here. Once you throw this guy, go up one more flight of stairs and then you want to throw... A stun grenade just to make sure the guys behind you aren't catching up. And also to take out these guys here. A bit easier. Now the main way to do this, other than throwing stun grenades, is by CQC throwing as you're seeing here. You want to CQC throw them and then equip a weapon. To make it so you can keep running immediately after you throw them. And then what I like to do is every two flights of stairs, I throw a new stun grenade. If they knock you down, it's a little waste of time, but it's not a huge deal. They don't do too much damage when they knock you down. And if you've been picking up stun grenades as much as I have, feel free to use them as often as you'd like. Since after this portion, there's only going to be one more instance where we use them. And you don't really need them for later on in the game. Now, there's going to be one guard that's going to run up on you, so I'm going to unequip. There he is. I'm going to unequip my weapon just so I can throw him easier. And once you're up here, pick up the ammo if you need it. Most important thing here is just to keep running. Make it to the ladder before they can get to you and fire at you. Now, once you're up here, you're going to need to re-equip your key card. We're not going to take any fire for a little bit here. Now, the reason why I don't like doing the boba skip, especially when I'm playing on hard or extreme, is because on extreme specifically, you don't get your health back after boss fights at all. You only get a full health bar at certain intervals in the game, and this is one of them. So the torture sequence is the first one, and then the next one is during this section here. Once you get to this point, just equip your rope to progress the game. But anyway, so I like getting my health back here. And while the boba skip does save around two and a half minutes, you don't get your health back if you do it. Now this is going to be the next section where I'm going to save and I highly advise you do the same. Because if you mess up during any point in this or you take too much damage while you do this, 
you can just reload and like I said this is this is one of the instances in the game where you get your full health bar back make sure you save here again do not save over your sniper wolf save file once you've taken control of snake here what you want to do is immediately hold down in X if you're on a PlayStation controller you want to be holding it this whole time that's gonna make it so you can go down one level while you're waiting for the codec call Once you've done that, you want to go all the way to the left here and then hold down right and X, then left and down and X, then left down and X again, then down right and X, down left and X, down right and X again. It's okay if you get hit here a few times. Not a big deal. And if you get hit too many times, that's why we save there. So we can just reload the save file if you take too much damage and try again. This part isn't terribly difficult. Now for this next part, if you want to be really safe, you're going to equip your body armor. And then you're going to equip your stun grenades. What you want to do is throw a stun grenade right away and start running. Once you hear the music, you're going to dodge. So right now, dodge. Then you want to throw another stun grenade. Keep going straight. Then dodge again. It's okay if you get hit. That's why we have the body armor. Then throw one more stun grenade just for good measure. You're going to go around these guys. And then once you're here, you're good to go. You can pick up that ration if you need it, if you don't have one. And then go through the store. Once you get past them, they don't really shoot at you. That part is a little dangerous if you're playing on hard or extreme. I would learn how to do the boba skip for most people. So you don't have to do that portion. But either way, once you've made it into this room, you're going to go right, right away and just go down the stairs. You have to do this to be able to progress the game. And it's just easier if we do it now. It's just more efficient. But yeah, if you're on hard or extreme, maybe invest some time into learning how to do the boba skip. I, like I said, don't usually like doing it even when I'm playing on hard or extreme. Because I like getting my full health bar back before doing this helicopter fight. Which is, I hate this, I honestly hate this boss fight. Even on easy, it's just annoying and it takes forever. And it's also kind of risky, certain points of that boss fight. So if you don't go in there with as much health as possible, there's a chance that you could end up dying there. Either way, once you've gone down the stairs, make your way all the way back up them. And then walk over this way to trigger this cutscene. Once you've triggered that cutscene, equip a chaff grenade and throw one right away. There's going to be gun cameras here that we need to avoid. We're going to throw a chaff grenade every two flights of stairs. So one, two, and then once you're at the top of this one, throw a new chaff grenade. Going to make it so it goes off right when we need to avoid the gun cameras. Same thing here. Once you pass the cameras, it's two flights. One, two. Once you're up here, throw a new chaff grenade. Same thing here. One. Don't get stuck there like I did. Two. Throw a new chaff grenade. And then once you're at the one that has four cameras, that's the last one you have to worry about. So save your uh, chaff grenades. Don't throw anymore. We're going to do the same thing to come back down after we do the helicopter fight. Now here, I like to pick up, pick up these extra stinger missiles here. This extra ammo. These extra chaff grenades. Once you're here, you can turn back around and make your way up this ladder here. Now, as soon as we walk through this door, we're going to start the helicopter fight. So this would be the next save point after you walk through this door where I would save. So just skip this cutscene and save here. Now for the helicopter fight, if you try, to, if you want to do this as efficiently as you can while still making it easy on yourself, try to follow my movements. So the helicopter is always going to start off in the same spot directly in front of us. Equip your stinger missile and then try to get a missile lock on it as quickly as you can. While the missile is hitting, you can unequip and run all the way over this way. 
It's all right. If you get hit here, make sure you have your body armor on. Forgot to do that. The helicopter's going to fly this way. Get a lock on it. Same thing. Shoot a missile and then cancel it. Then you want to run over this way. Put your back up against this wall. That's going to cause them to fly over to your right. Get a lock on. Same thing. And you want to run over this way. The way that the helicopter flies is dictated by your current position after you shoot it. So you can kind of get it to go where you want it to go by doing this. Get a missile lock there. Shoot it and then run over this way. It's going to appear right in front of us here. It should at least. Now he's going the long way now. This area is a little tricky. You kind of have to aim above the wreckage there. He's over here. Try to get another shot off on him. Try not to miss. He's going to do the thing now where he flies off and shoots missiles into the arena. All you have to do here is just hang out behind this block here on the map. You can push yourself up against this back wall here if you're worried about it right here. Now you want to equip your stinger so you can see where he's going to go after this lands. Looks like he's going to go to the right. You can quickly get a shot off on him. Then I like to hang out here. Put the barrier between the helicopter and yourself. Once he's over this way, you can try to sneak a shot in. Once he's here, this is kind of where you want him. You can just spam shots if you do this correctly. I didn't do it correctly there. He's going to hide for a bit. This is what wastes a lot of time. Is him doing this. And remember, if you're low on health like I am here, you can use your one ration here. This is where I usually use it when I'm playing on extreme. And just to be super safe, this is the much slower way to do it. But just wait for him to hide underground. You can track him using your stinger lock on. Wait for him to resurface. Shoot him quickly and then find somewhere to get undercover. There's a way that you can like kind of cheese this fight and shoot him over and over again. But for most people, that's probably not the best idea. Unless you practice this fight and know what you're doing. So doing it this method is probably your best bet. Just shooting him once, waiting for him to hide, and then locking on, using your stinger to lock on and look at him through the ground here. So you can shoot him as soon as he resurfaces before he can get a shot off on you. Just kind of follow him around. Doesn't look like he's going to resurface here, so I know he's probably going to resurface over here now. There he goes. Shoot him and then go undercover. Or behind cover, I should say. Wait for him to hide again. Like I said, this fight's really annoying and really slow, especially if you do it this way. But it's better to do it this way just to be safe. And especially if this is your first time going for Fox or Big Boss rank. And you haven't really practiced and gotten this fight down. It's just better to do it this way. Main thing here is just keeping track of him. That's the scariest part. Is trying to get the shot off on him before he gets it on us. Body armor should help here. And like I said, if you need to use your ration on this fight, this is probably one of the best parts to use it. Just remember that after this, we do have a section that involves us taking out a bunch of guards on the helicopter. Or sorry, on the, um, on the elevator, I should say, not the helicopter. So if you don't use it here, you'll probably use it in that next section. Since I'm playing on easy, and a lot of you will probably be playing on the Japanese version on easy as well, we get our full health bar back, and then some, after this boss fight, so we don't really have to worry about it. But even if you're on easy, and you're just kind of worried about it, you can use your one ration here. Looks like we have one more shot before he goes down. So let's make sure we do that without messing up. Once you get that last shot off on him, he can still fire at you, so make sure you still go undercover. And then he's going to do the same thing that he does in between his phase 1 and his phase 2. 
he's gonna kind of like fly off into the distance and shoot a missile at you. You just pretty much have to hide in the same spot as we did last time behind this block. So be careful here. Even though he's out of health, he can still fire at you. So avoid those shots. As you can see, he's flying off. You just want to be here, positioned here, so it doesn't kill you. This is kind of like his last ditch attempt to take you out. But once you've avoided that, the fight is over. As you can see, since we're on easy, we get our extended health bar refilled completely. Nice job taking on the hind D, however. Whether you did it on easy, hard, or extreme. The fight's going to be pretty similar across all difficulties. Once you're done, just go back in the room using your key card and then back down the ladder. And once you're here, if you hate that fight as much as I do, you can save. I'm not going to bother saving here, though. I tend to save less when I'm playing on the Japanese version just because it's much easier. And we should you should have plenty of chaff grenades to use during this part here. So you're going to throw one right away because of the gun cameras. So the first set is going to be here. Coming up here. And then once we get past them, you're going to wait two. Same way. But once you're about here, you can throw a new chaff grenade. Same thing here. One. Two. And once you're at the bottom, just throw a new chaff grenade. We have one more after this. So remember, one. And then two. Once you're at the bottom, you can throw your last chaff grenade for this section. And you've made it past the gun cameras. Now, this is the portion of the game that I was talking about during the helicopter fight where we're going to take on four guards. So what you want to do is first press the elevator, but elevator button twice and then make your way this way to pick up some Famous ammo. Put on your body armor and equip your Famous. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use our gun, but we're mostly going to be using choking, CQC choking, to take these guys out. But the most important part, once again, equip your body armor. That body armor is just a blessing for these elite runs. You're going to get a codec call where Otacon tells you that the reason why you're over the weight limit on the elevator is because there are four guards that have stealth camoufla camouflage on with you on the elevator. What you're going to do is you're going to start off by spraying all of them. Get them all to fall down. Once you, there's only one standing, you can choke him out and then do the same thing. Just shoot at them again. Try to pay attention to which one's getting up first. Looks like it's this guy. So run over to him and choke him out. It's alright if you get shot a couple times here, that's why we have the body armor. Now, I didn't get to fully choke this guy out. And on easy, they go down really easily, so... After you've shot them two or three times, they go down. On hard and extreme, it's going to require a bit more choking and shooting at them to keep them at bay. But again, the body armor makes it so much easier. And if you didn't use your one allowed ration during your, the helicopter fight, you can use it during that fight. Once you get to the bottom floor, you want to throw a chaff grenade, equip your key card. And then you're going to run straight into this room. Pick up this ammo. And then you're going to head right into the exit here. Now, you have to do that kind of quickly. As you can see, I got shot by a gun camera because like, it wasn't quick enough. If you want to be super safe, you can throw another chaff grenade there so you don't get hit. Once you're here, you just want to walk forward to start the Sniper Wolf 2 fight. Now, there are many ways to do this fight. And... There are some that make it super quick. Well, not super quick, but quicker. And then there's the safe way, which is using the Nikita. I'm going to be showing you guys the safe way. Since we're not trying for a world record speed run or anything, we're just trying to get through the game with as minimal damage as possible and staying within the parameters of the Fox or Big Boss rating ranks. We're just going to be doing it the cheesy way. So you want to go all the way over here to the right. You want to take out your Nikita. And you want to go into first person view using the triangle button if you're on the PlayStation controller. Look around for those two blocks. Those two blocks indicate that that's Sniper Wolf. That's her outline of her body. And then you just want to fly the missiles into her. 
and then do the same thing. Just keep doing that over and over again. That little hill that we're behind makes it so she can't shoot at you no matter what angle she's at. So all you have to do is, if you want to get fancy, you can press R1 to manually detonate the Nikita missile once it gets close to her. But just be careful doing that. Because if you do that too quickly and then press square too quickly after doing that, you'll shoot another missile out with Snake. So here's what I mean. You can fly this into her. Press R1 once it's close. That cancels the Nikita, so you can just fire up another rocket immediately after. But if you do it too fast, you run the risk of blowing yourself up, so just be very careful. The whole point in doing it this way is to avoid taking any damage from her. Yes, it takes a little longer, but it's an ultra-safe method of doing this. And there's no possible way she can do any damage to you from any angle, from any of her sniping spots. Now, I'm going to show you in just a second a trick that you can do with some of your other weapons to speed this up if you want to. If you have some Stinger missiles left, you can actually use those against her. As you can see, you can get the lock, the signature on her, the lock on. Kind of finicky here doing this. You might have to get a little closer. Now, be careful. As you can see, she's shooting at us. So this is why you don't really want to do this too often. It's kind of risky. Got her sights on me here. For most people, I would just advise using the Nikita method. Because this just takes forever, as you can see, to finally get the heat signature on her. And then what you can do is equip your PSG-1. The problem is I'm at a hill here, and it's going to block me. But you can use a Stinger missile, and then immediately, once it's in the air like this, switch to your PSG-1. And that's going to make it so you can shoot her as she's traversing in between her little sniping spots. For, like I said, if you want to be really safe, there's no reason not to just use the Nikita for that entire boss fight. I just wanted to show you that there is an alternate method that is a little bit faster if you're if you have stinger missiles left after the helicopter fight and you're also pretty de a pretty decent shot with the PSG1 you can speed it up by stinger missile PSG1 stinger missile PSG1 either way however you do it congratulations on taking out sniper wolf for good you can use a chaff grenade here i like to do this you don't need to do this but wait for the chaff to go off and go to this little side garage here and this is where you can pick up a bunch of nikita missiles now here's one of the main portions of the game. Once you pick up those Nikita missiles, by the way, use another chaff to go into the next room here. That takes you to the Disc 2 area. The next boss fight, which is obviously the Vulcan Raven fight in the Freezer room, that's where the main difference is here between the different versions. So if you're playing the Japanese version like me, it's impossible to get him in a stun lock like it is in every other version of the game. So the other NTSC versions and the other PAL versions... You can actually get Vulcan Raven in a stun lock, and I'll be showing you how to do that if you're playing on hard or extreme. But if you're playing on the Japanese version on easy like me, we have to use grenades, we have to use claymores, and we can use the Nikita, we just can't keep him in a stun lock like you can in, this other in these other difficulties and different versions of the game. So what you want to do here is save immediately. This is going to be your first save in Disc 2. Again, make sure you do not save over your post sniper will fight save file once you're done saving what we're going to do is run down here and actually equip the psg1 if i can find it there it is and then we're just going to take this guy out because he is directly in front of where we need to go which is obviously this little crawl this little crawl space or little place that we have to shimmy here now be very careful not to get hit by this thing i got horrible rng here and i'm gonna have to wait forever probably now but that's just how it is. If you try, to, if I were to try to stand up right now and hit that thing, I would fall into the lava. So you just have to be patient here. Once it kind of takes off, then you can walk forward into the next area here. There's no reason to rush, though. We have plenty of time. So once it passes you and you're clear of it, you can shimmy across where you need to go. Equip a chaff grenade so you can run a little bit faster. Now, go into first person view so you can see where this guy is. And once you come down the, the stairs, he's programmed to come back up. So come over this way to avoid being seen by him. And once he passes you, 
you're free to walk down into the next room. Now, this next room is going to have a lift. And on that lift, we're going to have a little mini boss fight, another guard rush where we have to eliminate some guards. So while we're waiting for the elevator, you can pick up some extra Famous bullets here. And then some more here if you still need some. And I would equip your body armor for this. And you can leave your grenade equipped for now. We're actually going to do a little trick. You don't need to do this trick. But I like to do this to immediately eliminate one of these guys and, and take him out of commission. Now you can save here if you want to. I'm not going to because I'm playing on easy and I have the body armor. So what I like to do is equip the grenade, loop around this guy, and then throw him off of the arena here. And then from now on, I just use my gun and choke these guys out to finish them off. So once this guy stands up, I'm going to choke him to finish him off. And that's pretty much that encounter there. It's not terribly difficult, and you don't need to do that little fancy grenade trick where you throw him off at the beginning. You can just take him out by choking him or shooting at him. But it is a really quick way to take one of those guys out and not have to worry about him, especially if you're playing on the harder difficulties. Once you've reached this area, you can use a chaff grenade here. There's a gun camera that's hidden right here. As you can see, you can't really see it here, but there it is. To avoid any damage. And now we're just going to activate this next lift here. That's going to take us down to the level where we fight Vulcan Raven. Now, once again, if you're playing the Japanese version, it's going to be a little bit different than if you play the hard or extreme version. I'm going to show you guys both ways to do it, whether you're playing on this version or the NTSC or PAL region versions. We're going to start off by doing it in this version, though, the Japanese version. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're primarily going to be using grenades. And then we might use a mixture of grenades and the Nikita or grenades, Nikita, and Claymores. Pretty much any explosive that you have, you're going to have to use to your advantage since we cannot stun lock him here. Now, again, if you want to save here, you can just in case you're worried about this fight. There's some extra Nikita missiles here and a ration if you still haven't used yours. Once you're ready to go, open up the door and then equip your body armor. We're going to be using that and also, like I said, grenades or you can use the Nikita once you're in there. I'm going to start off with grenades though. Now, as soon as the fight starts, you want to go over to this left shipping container here. Get out your Nikita and we're going to try to hit him with a cheeky Nikita shot. Just one at the beginning here. Then immediately go to your grenade and throw a grenade down here and over here just to cover both sides that he might potentially go. To do that, looks like he's coming our way, so you can throw another grenade here. going to be a lot of grenade tossing and claymores and stuff that you can use for this fight. Since again, we cannot stun lock him here like we can on hard or extreme. This version of the fight is actually harder, in my opinion, than on Harder Extreme. So just keep throwing grenades down these little alleyways, if you want to call them that. Once you got them on that left side. Kind of have to time them right here. He's going to start sprinting after you have him at have health, and that's going to knock down some of the arena that you fight him in. Try to throw a grenade here, beat him down here. Keep him in place by letting him see you. You can also place another claymore down here. Just to cover that side. Otherwise, just keep using grenades as much as you can. Make sure you have your body armor equipped for this fight if I didn't mention that already. I'm gonna kinda cheese some damage here by taking damage from him. It looks like he's going this way, so I'm going to cover this side with a Claymore. You can also use C4 if you have some C4 as well. I was going to end it there. So this one should end it here. And that's the fight. Like I said, there's a lot more kind of variability in this fight on easy since you can't stun lock him i'm going to show you guys that are playing on hard and extreme how to stun lock him it's much easier than what you just saw there now as mentioned this fight is going to be a little different 
on hard and extreme if you're playing any other version that isn't the Japanese version. The reason is, as I mentioned, you cannot stun lock him when you're playing the Japanese version. However, any other version on hard and extreme, you can do this. The only difference here between hard and extreme, and by the way, you are watching hard footage. I'm going to be doing this on hard on one of my older save files. The only difference between those two difficulties is where Raven starts. And you should be seeing on screen the different starting positions for Raven. So take a look at that just a second. And then we're going to start the fight here. The way that this fight is going to work on this version or these versions of the games is essentially you're just going to use the Nikita and keep continuously firing missiles into Raven over and over again. And as you can see, he's kind of like kept in place. We'll see in just a second here, the, the actual stun lock. So he's going to be shooting at the Nikita missile, but for some reason, the way that the game is programmed, he can't shoot them. He has invincibility frames for a second. And apparently so does our missile. Now in the Japanese version, as you saw, if you tried to do this, he would immediately shoot your missile and kill you. But as you're seeing here, you can just do this over and over again until he's dead. And again, this only works if you're playing on any other version that isn't the Japanese just version. The which is why I mentioned during the Japanese version of the fight that actually playing on hard and extreme is easier for this specific fight for that reason. Either way, once you're done with the Vulcan Raven boss fight, congratulations. We're going to continue on. You're going to get hit with a codec call. So just equip your level 7 key card and some chaff grenades. And you're going to be in a room that's covered with gun cameras here. Make sure you pick up these extra chaff grenades. And then once you're here, you can throw a chaff grenade. We're going to use that to go over to this right side here and pick up some extra stinger ammo for the Rex fight. So we start off with a ton of ammo. I'll try to do that quickly so you don't get shot by these gun cameras over here like I just did. Pick up this last bit of stinger ammo and then we're going to go into Rex's lair. Now as we continue forward, this portion of the game is going to be where the backtracking is going to start. And a lot of it is going to be the same thing over and over again. So for the sake of the guide, I am going to be fast forwarding certain sections. So this first time around, I'm not going to fast forward this since I need to explain what we're doing here. But there's going to be instances where we're going to be doing the same thing two or three times. And you guys don't really need me to explain those parts. Either way, make your way up this ladder. And then we're going to go to this left side and go up this little mini ladder here. Once you're here, you have another ladder to go up. And then another one to go down. A lot of codec calls during this portion as well. This is where a lot of our time is wasted, but we still have plenty of time. We have to beat this game in under three hours, and I think we're only at around an hour and 40 minutes, so. And there's not that much left of the game. Now, once you've climbed this ladder, there's a little trick that you can do here that I'm sure you've heard me mention before. And it's done by unequipping and re-equipping your weapons over and over again. That actually silences your footsteps. It resets Snake's walking animation and makes it so our footsteps are silenced. So usually this ground is super loud and this guy would hear us walking across it. But as you can see, I'm right behind him and he's not he can't hear anything. And that's because we're doing that little trick there. We're going to be using that a lot during this portion of the game. So pretty much you can practice it by, as soon as you come down those ladders, just start mashing R1 or the equivalent of R1 on your platform to, again, unequip and then re-equip your weapon over and over again. Now after this, we're going to get hit by a mandatory alert. What you can do here is throw on your body armor to minimize the damage you take if you take damage here. And we're just going to CQC throw that guy. And then just keep running. Don't even worry about taking him out or stunning him or whatever. Just keep running forward with a grenade equipped and your body armor. And then make your way up this ladder. 
There's nothing we can really do about that alert. That's one of the mandatory alerts in the game. Just make sure you don't go back down that ladder and make it so he can see you, because that will count as another alert. This is another portion of the game where a lot of people mess up. They, they accidentally go into the PAL key room and then come back out. And every time you do that, it causes another alert. You're stacking alerts on top of each other. So you got to be very careful when you do that. Now, our objective here is to find the PAL key that in that cutscene, it was explained that the PAL key kind of fell from our hands into this lower portion of Rex's lair. If you're under a certain threshold of alerts and beating the game under a certain amount of time, like we are here, the PAL key will be consumed by a rat that you need to take out. And it could be in one of two positions. So we got lucky and it's here this time. And as you can see, you can use a stinger or anything. I like to use a stinger because it has a huge blast radius. And even if the rat tries to run away, you'll hit it. But it'll either be there where I got mine, or I'll show you guys the other spot very quickly here. So if it's not down here when you aim your stinger missile, you want to walk over this way. And the rat will be somewhere over here. So you don't want to walk too close because you'll scare the rat and it'll go in that little vent there. So it'll be somewhere here. You can just do the same thing. Equip your stinger missile and just take it out that way. Either way, once you have your pal key, we're going to go back up where we just were. So for the sake of the video, I am going to speed it up once we go up this ladder. Remember, once you're here to start spamming your weapons, your grenades, to silence your footsteps, to practice silencing your footsteps. You don't have to do it that far back, but make sure that you're doing it here once you're behind this guard. And once you've made it to the PAL key room, you just have to equip your PAL key. And be very careful not to trigger the cameras here. So you equip your pal key and then follow the way that I'm going here. Swoop around this way. And insert it into the first laptop over here. Now what we need to do is this is the beginning of the backtracking section that a lot of people hate in Metal Gear Solid 1. So we just have to go back down this way. Now there is something tricky here that you need to do. Make sure that you walk toward this wall and then up. And that's going to give you the perfect timing to not get spotted by this guy. You should actually save. And you should be seeing it on screen. You should save after you insert that first PAL key in case you do that wrong. But the way that I time it is by hitting that wall that's across the way. And then aiming Snake up with the D-pad or the analog stick. And that gives it, you just enough time to where the guard can't see you when you start walking toward him. This is especially important if you don't have a radar because you're playing on hard or extreme. Which is what I usually do. I don't have a radar when I usually play, so that's how I time it. I just go up against that wall, wait a second, and then walk forward or up where we need to go. And usually, like 99% of the time, that gives me the correct timing that I need to get past that guard. Now, while you're going past that guard, something else that I forgot to mention is that you need to be using this trick where you unequip and equip your weapons to also silence your footsteps. And again, this is even more important if you're playing on hard or extreme since they have better hearing on those difficulties as well as better vision. So just a couple of things. You'll see me do it uh, at least one more time since we have to backtrack over and over again. Now here you don't have to waste the chaff. Just run against this wall and then on the right side of this bridge railing here and then straight down to this wall. And that makes it, as you can see there, none of the gun cameras were triggered. So we're good to go. Now once you're in this room, this is where we need to wait a couple, either a minute or two for our PAL key to freeze. So what I like to do is come up against this door and have it so it's open and then just equip the PAL key and then periodically just check if your key is frozen and once it is just start backtracking back to the PAL room key all right once your key is frozen and it's indicated by turning blue, you can walk forward. And like I said, we're going to make our way back to the PAL room. E or the PAL key room, I should say. Same thing here. You can avoid the gun cameras by following our same route. Up against this wall, the right side of this bridge here. And then all the way up against this wall. We'll make it so these cameras can't see you or shoot at you. Now we're back in Rex's lair. And we're just going to go back up the ladders and all that fun stuff. So I'll talk to you in a second. And remember, once you're around here, to start mashing your equip and unequip button. 
make sure that your footsteps are silenced. Just give this guy a second to turn the corner there, and then we can make our way into the room. Now what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to follow our same exact route throughout through the room so we don't get caught by the cameras. Make sure you have your PAL key equipped and go into the middle laptop here. Once you've done that, you can go out the same way you came in, do this way. And now we have to backtrack a little more. So here is another example of what I was talking about. I like to walk all the way up against this wall over this way. I hit it and then I walk up. And that's going to make it so this guy is turned around. And remember to mash your equip and unequip while you pass him as well. Once you're here, you can stop doing that. He's not going to hear you from here. And I guess nobody really has radar during this section since our radar is jammed. Even those of us who are playing on the Japanese version, so. That's honestly the best way that I found. Just hit that wall and then start walking up. And by that time, it's like perfect timing that the guy turns around. Now we have to backtrack one more time. But this part is kind of annoying because you have to go all the way back up to the boiler room area. So we can heat up the key. And that means we have to go up quite a few lifts. So it does take quite a while. Now again, you can pick up this stinger ammo. And then hug this wall here. We're going to pick up the other stinger ammo that's off to the right on our way back. Now be careful because in this next section, there are new guards here. So to avoid this, this also works on harder extreme. When you're going down, head to the left side and you'll avoid the guards as you can see on the radar there. Now when we go back up, we're going to hit the right side. So when you're going down, go left. When you're going up, go right. And you'll see that in just a second once we double back over this way. Once we're here, we're just going to go back up this first lift here. Once you're here, just make sure to avoid the gun camera. You don't have to throw a chaff this time. You just have to kind of tuck yourself under it. As you can see here in just a second, I can't shoot you at this angle. And then make your way up this lift. And you'll be at the boiler room. And we're going to be doing the same thing that we did when we froze our card. We're just going to be waiting there with the door open, ready to go. As soon as it's kind of boiled over, we're going to go back up all this way that we're going here. This is really the only annoying part in Metal Gear Solid for a lot of people. I don't mind it. It's kind of chill, and it gives you a little bit of downtime before the both Rex fights and also the Jeep escape, so I really don't mind it. It's actually kind of nice to me. Once you're here, just walk straight down, and you're going to be in the boiler room. Once you're here, I like to hang out up against this wall that's right next to the store here. So, like, right here. And then, same thing. Make sure you have those doors open, ready to go. And periodically check on your PAL key. Once it turns red, you can backtrack all the way the way we just came. And progress the game. Now, I should say, during any of these portions, if you want to save, just in case you mess up so you don't have to do all this all over again, feel free to save. I usually don't save here, especially when I'm playing the Japanese version just because I don't really see the need to, but we have plenty of saves. Trust me, this is the guy that's going to be the most open to what you think. It's, it's going to be on you to save whenever you want. You have up to 80 saves, and that is a ridiculous amount, so feel free to save during any portion of this. You could have saved when we got the first PAL key. You could have saved. You could save after each of these different PAL keys, so like you insert the first one, freeze, freeze the next one, and then once you inserted the frozen one, you save there. Whatever you want to do, you can do. I just don't usually save during this part very often. Our key has turned red, which means we can walk back the way we came. We're going to have to go back down both of these lifts and all that. But it's not too big of a deal.
Now, once you're here, unfortunately, we do have to use a chaff grenade. Or else we'll get shot by the gun camera. But that's okay. You should have plenty. If you've been picking them up whenever I pick them up. Wait for it to go off. Then make your way onto the next lift here. And now remember, once we go into the frozen room where we fought Raven the second time, there are going to be guards still present there. Once you made it here, again, be careful. There are guards here in this next room. But as I mentioned earlier, when we're going up, the way that's open to us is going to be the right side. Just make sure you go around to the right of that sh uh, first shipping container. And that's the same for if you're playing on hard or extreme as well. You pick up these extra chaff grenades if you want to. You don't really need them. Then throw one once you're here. And we're going to use this opportunity to go get some extra ammo here. I would throw another chaff grenade once you're up here. But once the other one ends, you're kind of covered. I'm maxed out on stinger missiles, which is what we want for the Rex fight. So we don't have to worry about it. We don't really have to go pick up extra missiles or anything during the fight, which is kind of annoying to do. So we're finally back at Rex's lair for the last time. Make sure to make your way to the ladders, and I will talk to you in a second. Once you made it to the room, you have to do this one more time. Just make sure you follow our normal route throughout the room here. Make sure your PAL key is equipped. Go down this way, and then make your way over to the right side laptop, the final laptop here. Liquid is going to reveal that he has actually been posing as Master Miller, so you want to skip this code call where he does that. After that, you're going to be trapped in this room with gas filling the room. You immediately need to open up your codec and call Otacon. He's going to mess with the security system and open up the room for you. As soon as you have your codec open, just make sure to call Otacon. He's going to be 141.12 if you forget. You only have to call him once to so accidentally press the button again. Close your codec, and then you just want to hang out by the store here. Let Otacon do his thing. The faster you call him, though, the faster that this door opens and you're able to progress the game. He's going to call you back and tell you that the security has been disabled. Door is open. We can go through. We're going to see a glimpse of liquid. And then we're going to get a bunch of cutscenes that we need to skip before we start the Rex fight. Now, the Rex fight is going to be the next place that we save. So as soon as the fight starts, we're going to save there. Dang it. Here we go. Take the second to save here. You can either start storage 2 or start saving over your past save files. Just to make sure you do not save over that file that we've been talking about this whole time. The Sniper Wolf save file. Once the fight starts, the easiest way to take on Rex is actually by baiting his attack. You should be seeing a YouTube short pop up if you want a more in-depth explanation. But essentially, we're going to bait him to attack us with his laser. And with his railgun. Or sorry, not his railgun, but his his Gatling gun type thing. So you want to shoot the radome, walk toward him, get him to shoot you with the laser again, bait the laser out, shoot the radome, walk toward him, bait the laser again, shoot the radome, then bait the laser again. And just do that over and over and over again. That's all you got to do. This also works on hard and extreme. This is the way that I always take Rex down, regardless of the difficulty. Once you get him through phase one, you're going to have a small little section here where Gray Fox goes out valiantly. There's no way to skip this or anything, so we just have to watch this for a bit. It doesn't go on for too long. 
And then once this is over, we skip the following cutscene and we start phase two. Phase two is going to be exactly the same. We're going to bait that laser out and maybe also his little mini guns. And instead of shooting the radome this time, though, the only difference is we're going to shoot his actual cockpit. So there's the laser. Bait that. Get your stinger out. Shoot the cockpit. Bait the mini gun if you can. Now, if you get too far away, if you're too far away like I was there, he's going to use his missiles. Just walk forward while those missiles are going off and then continue to bait your normal attacks that we've been baiting. It's a little different on the Japanese version. His The way that he shoots that little minigun is kind of weird. So just keep that in mind, but it's the same premise. To bait, to uh, avoid the minigun fire, what you want to do is walk to one of the sides, so parallel to him, and then walk in to bait his laser again. And then the other thing that you have to keep track of here is make sure that you're walking far enough away to actually get a signature or a lock on on the cockpit, if that makes sense. It's very easy though. Once you get that little rotation down, it's the easiest way, one of the easiest ways for sure to beat Rex during both phases. Either way, congratulations for taking Metal Gear Rex down. Now next up we have the liquid boss fight before we start the escape sequence. This boss fight isn't gonna be terribly difficult. Even if you can't do the liquid punch punch infinite combo, whatever you want to call it. This fight is still very easy. If you want to know what I'm talking about with the infinite combo, you should check out the YouTube short that just should have appeared on your screen. Otherwise, I'm going to try to do it for you guys here. And I'm also going to show you guys the more traditional way of doing it. Unfortunately, we cannot skip this cutscene either, so you just have to sit here and watch it. But I will speed it up for the sake of the video. I will talk to you all in a second. Once you're here, Liquid's going to start a countdown timer on the top right of your screen. Once you regain control of Snake, the first thing that you want to do is save here, just in case you mess up this fight. And again, I'm going to be showing you guys a way to do the infinite combo if you want to try it that way. Otherwise, we're just going to take him on normally. But again, don't forget to save here. This is very important. We're going to save here, and then we're going to save after we beat him during the Jeep escape sequence. So I've regained control of Snake. I'm going to take a second to save here. I'm just going to save over my last save file since we don't need that one anymore. And once you gain control of Snake, you just want to CQC throw him back, then walk down this way to make him walk over there. Throw him one more time, and then here's where you start the actual infinite, if you can get it. As you can see, I missed it there. But you basically want to time your punches to do 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, over and over again like I did there. And that drains his health very quickly, as you can see. Once it's low, you just have to kick him off by completing the combo. Once you defeated Liquid, however, just skip through these remaining codec calls and skip any cutscenes. And we're going to save for... Many reasons, the first being if we die here during this escape, we can just reload from there and not have to do the liquid fight over again. But also, if you mess up like I did the first time that I was attempting this trophy on live stream, I accidentally pressed X when it asked me to save, or it asked me to complete my save file when you beat the game. I accidentally pressed X, and so I didn't get the trophy for the bandana the first time around. Now, once you're here, what I like to do is actually hide behind this jeep here wait for this guy to run up to you and then you can grab him and you can just use him as a human shield against his friends here and you don't really want to kill him so don't choke him out too much once meryl says you can get in the jeep just go in the jeep she's going to run him over for you and that's going to save us from having to kill him and once you're here just make sure you blow up these barrels as quickly as you can Now this section, especially if you're playing on easy, is not going to be very hard at all. Point your gun over to the right, as I'm doing here, and that's going to give you the perfect angle to then go into first person view and blow up the barrels and take these guys out. So just have it off to the side a little bit. As you can see, it's very easy to blow up the barrel there, and then blow up that barrel and you're free to go. Now same thing, have it angled off to the right here for this next portion. This next portion isn't going to have any barrels. You just have to take out three guys by controlling your spray at each of them. So you just want to do like a wide sweep like this as much as you can. You're probably going to get hit here, but it's not too bad.
Just take them all out. And then Meryl will push through this barrier here. Now all that's left is Liquid. So again, make sure that you save at the beginning of this Jeep escape. And now the trick here is actually to shoot Liquid as such, and then look away, and then shoot him again. Because he has invincibility frames if you keep looking at him and trying to shoot at him. You actually can't hit him, so that's why I'm kind of like staying at like a weird angle. And here I like to let go of the fire button. So he bumps into the car. Because he kind of throws off your aim if you're still aiming down first person view. So I let it go and then readjust my aim before he's able to get a shot off on me. Let go. Do the same thing. Now this section is the same thing as the last one that I was trying to explain. You kind of want to shoot him and then look away for a second and then shoot him again. Otherwise you can't get the shot off on him. And then from here on out, it's just about having the gun lined up to where he it shoots him once his invincibility frames have worn off before he's able to shoot you. So I found the sweet spot there. I'm literally just holding the gun at the same spot. Same thing here. I think this damage you have to take. There's no way to avoid this, really. And on hard and extreme, you'll be getting shot by him way more. So if you have not used your ration up, up until this point and you get really close to dying, make sure you use that ration that we picked up right before this Jeep escape sequence. Once you've gone through that, however, that's the end of the game pretty much. You just have to skip through the codec calls, the cutscenes, and also the end credits. Now again, I just want to reiterate this because I messed this part up and you don't really want to do this Jeep escape portion three times like I did. Make sure that when you're asked to save your game, and I will show you guys in this video what that looks like, that you press the circle button. The circle button, as you probably have noticed, up until this point has been the confirm button. That's how it is in all of Metal Gear Solid 1 in every single version. In Japan, that is their confirm button, the circle button. So to not to save yourself a headache, make sure that you save your end game data once you've completed the game and the game prompts you to. And that's the way that you get awarded whatever special item you're working on. Now I'm going to explain a little bit more once we get through these credits what we're going to do after this since we should be getting our elite ranking right now but we're not quite finished with the rest of the trophies that we need to get. Once we get through these credits that I'm going to fast forward I'm going to quickly save my game and show you guys how that looks and then from there we're going to explain the rest of the video. So I will talk to you all in just a second. Here's our score screen. As you can see, we got the Elite Trophy because we got given the code name of Fox. Did it in a little over two hours, but remember, we did that in over two hours because we had to go through all the torture sequences. Otherwise, it would have been done in even under two hours. I had 15 saves. Obviously, no continues. We were only found three times. You're actually allowed, I believe, four alerts that are mandatory, but since we skipped the one with Johnny, we have one less. Only 20 enemies killed. I believe you're allowed 25 or less. Zero rations used for me on this run. We got the camera and the bandana special item. Now, here's where you need to be very careful. I would press circle just to get past this screen. And then this is where you need to press circle again and save your file wherever you want. Just make sure you do not save over your post Sniper Wolf boss fight save file. As you can see, we got the trophy for the bandana as well. Once you've saved the data from your Elite Rank playthrough, there are a few things we can do before we start the next playthrough. Firstly, we can go to the special menu, go to our album, and exercise the photo we took for the Ghostly Encounter trophy. Next, you can play through the first VR training mission found within the main menu to get the Get Good trophy. Once you've done those things, boot up the save data from after the first Sniper Wolf fight. This is going to be the beginning of your next playthrough. If you did everything like I did and made it through the torture without giving in, this time around you need to submit to the torture in order to get the stealth camouflage ending instead of the bandana. Since we already got our elite rank done, don't worry about kills, alerts, or rations used during the second playthrough. Just focus on completing the game and making sure you save after the score screen when prompted to. All that's left to do after you complete this second playthrough is getting all of the VR missions done in either the VR mission disc or the special missions disc. I hope this guide was able to help you achieve either Fox or Big Boss rank and get most of the other trophies out of the way at the same time. Thank you so much as always for watching and I will see you in the next one.